Welcome to the Nong Kai Podcast. Today we have a very, very special guest. I know that I say that with everyone, uh, but this guy's especially special. Um, Pong Vang, thank you for honoring yes, us sir. with your thank presence. You for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, and, uh, uh, no eggs. Yeah, and we go way back. Uh, you're like our third Henry grad. Uh, I'm just realizing, like, I'm just inviting, like, all of my friends from high school uh, to, to come and do the podcast. Because I think, uh, well, there's uh, me, you, and then uh, Sophia also went to high school with us. Uh, and, we, and she was a guest early on. So at some point, we'll get all the, all the Henry grad, graduates on. Uh, but thank you. And then we also went to church together. We did. Like, uh, way yeah, we back in the day. Yeah. Um, so I've known you for a long time, and you know one of the things that's really cool is like I got to watch your career bloom, from like back in high school, mm -hmm. you were the Asian Club president, you were singing uh, for the the Hmong show, the May show at Patrick Henry, which is a big deal if, if anyone's ever if you if you guys have been to Henry, um, but you were singing there. Um, who would have thought? You know, like we're just like. We're just nobodies out of like out of North Minneapolis, right? And then to see you take off and do so well, it was really amazing. And then you just got back from a tour of uh, Southeast Asia, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, shoot, uh, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with your yeah. past, or do we want to start with with well, the tour? Well, let's, let's just start with because I because I don't know Pong, so let me yeah, just say yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so you're from Minneapolis, born and raised, then. Yep, uh, born and raised in Minneapolis on the north side. Oh, the north um, side, nice. Went to school all the way through, uh, all the way through high school there. So yeah. Um, currently now in St. Paul, but pretty much I, I I grew up all all those years in Minneapolis. So. For sure, for sure. So it sounds like you you always been into the music thing then. Uh, I think the music thing started a little late for me. Yeah. Um, growing up, I was more actually into sports. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, growing up in the neighborhood, just playing basketball, football in the neighborhoods, you know. That's um, right. Our only Hmong <laughs> basketball player at Henry. Oh, right, yeah. right. When we were killing it too, yeah. When you Yeah, I mean the team was number one in state. I played oh, I played nice. with the freshman team. Yeah. Um after that I was part of that program for a couple of years too, but I was uh yeah, into sports. So it was kinda weird to see a lot of my friends see me transition to music. They were yeah. actually kinda making fun of me, like, You don't you don't sing. I don't know what what you're yeah. doing on stage and then all of a sudden it kinda clicked for me for music wise. So um yeah, I think I think the NBA dream just didn't work out because I was too small. Yeah, yeah. But just a little bit. Just a little yeah, bit, yeah, you know. Sure. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, music came. I would say when I was about sixteen. Okay. So. 16. Really, I thought it was uh, earlier, but okay. uh, through through church for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I think I always kept it within the walls of the church when I was. Mm. I think when I was fourteen, maybe when yeah. I started. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think part of the part of me growing into performing. Was 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 as you mentioned earlier the May show right? Yeah. So the talent shows that we had at school. So yeah. Um, when I started doing that, then I started kind of getting into the singing thing. But it was it was definitely a little later for me, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. This is why I left the church because like I was the only guy that couldn't sing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, I swear it's like a requirement that you have to know how to sing to go to church because like everybody else that I went to church with like are they have beautiful voices and they can sing really well. Uh, but yeah, thank you for coming, man, and. Um, yeah, like like I said, it's it's been so great to kind of see see your career. Um, um, let's see, talk a little bit about your your trip recently because you just got back from Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I know you, we were talking a little bit off the uh, before the podcast, but uh, talk a little bit about about your trip. Like, were you there strictly for music, or like? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, there were. Um, promoters who came to me and a different artist to, to book us um, earlier on uh, this past 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of times it fell through, um, but yeah. uh, I felt like I still wanted to go overseas. Yeah. And so me and a few friends uh, decided to still go. Um, okay. And then I was blessed enough to get the opportunity to know a few people out there to yeah. for them to bring me on for, for a show. Yeah. Um, two performances, but um, the, the main show I was part of was, was, was a pretty cool deal. A bunch of you know, legend artists um, yeah. and talented people out there. So, yeah, I went to Laos and I went to Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, yeah, great time. Learned yeah. a lot of different things and, and saw a lot of different things. And you so, said that was your first time overseas, leaving the country, right? Yeah, it was. You know, um, doing music, I've always been blessed to travel in the, within the States. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I've always dreamed about going back to, as we call the motherlands, where our yeah. parents came from. Um, 
finally the opportunity came and, and I decided it was the time to go. So, which yeah. I thought it was, it was, it was a did, perfect did time. Did you enjoy the experience of going? So, because I know, like, I like to travel and, and I've gone out the country a, a, a couple of times. Uh, I always find it really interesting, even though it's kind of annoying sometimes because it takes a long time. But I always find it interesting just going through customs and, like, it's just interesting to me. Did you enjoy yeah. that part? Because I know some of my <laughs> friends don't like that part. They're yeah. like, man, it's too much work. I got to go yeah. to the customs. Mm-hmm. It's stressful. I got to go. Sometimes it seems like they don't want to let you in, especially when I entered Laos. It's like, well, I got to pay to come into your country. <laughs> and like, you know, like what, what was your uh, thoughts on like uh, actually like the travel part of leaving the country? Uh, I, I, yeah, I thought that was the worst part of it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the long flights, right? I, I, I was dreading the long flights. Our longest leg was 13 hours, uh, which was rough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Felt like we, we just never arrived uh, to Thailand. Yeah. But once we got there, uh, yeah, for me, it was it was pretty smooth to go through immigration. Yeah. Um, I was really worried about that, too. Uh, went through immigration in Thailand. We went to Laos, also went through immigration. Uh, to me, it was a smooth process, but I was definitely nervous not having to, you know, do that before. So, yeah. Uh, but it, Overall, it was smooth, but what's what's your, what's your past that you're over it? Then you're just kind of enjoying the. And you were the trip, there with so. people that are from Laos and Thailand, right? Like, you're, um, were people hosting y'all there. Yeah, we we met some people that are from there that that really treat us with Kinda amazing hospitality. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I think if we didn't have that, it would mm-hmm. be a challenge. I mean, you, you probably still enjoy it. Yeah, but yeah. you don't you don't have the the people there to kind of help you navigate. Yeah, yeah. personal. Through, through when the you city. get that personal yeah. catering, it's a little easier. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. So they definitely loved us out there and yeah. showed us a great time. So. So, because you uh, went to Laos yeah, not too long ago, too, right? Yeah, I went there about a year ago, ago now, yeah. yeah. That was my first time. Yeah, and what I love about, like, both of your trips is, like, you guys, like, went into, like, the villages, right? Because you went and visited, yep. like, the, the old camps, right? Yeah, yeah, we went to um, Long Tien. Yeah, because, like, I went, but, like, when I went, it was just me and my wife, and so we just did all the touristy stuff. Yeah. So then, like, I just imagine it'd be so much different and so much, like... Um, like of a real vacation, right? And like a real like, because that's that's something I regretted not doing. Uh, but we only had a certain amount of time, so we we were only able to do like, you know, we were only in like some cities like you a guys day went or to two. Laos or Thailand? Oh, we went to Thailand, so oh, we Thailand. just did all the touristy stuff, oh, okay. just like your classic traditional touristy stuff. And so, but then when I look at your trips, it's like you guys were in the villages. You guys were talking to Hmong people. I was like in Thailand, like trying to find Hmong people. I was like yeah. saying yashong to everybody that I met that are like that looked like they wore anything that resembled Hmong, uh, but I, I couldn't find one. But you guys like had the full experience. Yeah. Like talk about that. Like that's got to be like a cool feeling, right? Yeah, it's nice because you get to ask them like personal questions, right? Like, oh, yeah. hey, yeah. what's it like? Like you live out here, like. <laughs> What's it like? What do you do every day? Like, what, what about for work? Where y'all work? Oh, y'all, how much y'all get paid? Like, you just get to find out more about, like, like when I went, I tried to look at it as, like, if I lived here, right? If I yeah. lived here, could I live here? Yeah. Like, what's the rules like? Like, oh, what y'all do every day? Like, just trying to really figure it out. Because yeah. I think when you're just touristy without having the connections, then you, um, you have to make up everything in your head as yeah. to how you yeah. think things work. Yeah. This is when you're actually there with people from there, especially when you're meeting other Hmong people and you can speak with them. Mm-hmm. Like you get to, uh, I mean, what was your experience like? Like just finding out, asking questions. And stuff? Yeah, I think in Laos we were blessed because I mean Laos, there's, there's more Hmong people in Laos. I feel mm-hmm. like um, in the cities that we went to, uh, but when we got to Thailand, I think it was harder to find Hmong people too. Yeah, uh, we went to a a city called Tha, which which okay. they said it's the most populated Hmong people, mm-hmm. but it's super. It's in the mountains, three, yeah. four hours from Bangkok. Okay. But once we got to the city, especially if you're doing touristy stuff, you don't see Hmong people at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if you don't have the connection of knowing someone out there, you might not even see Hmong people right. um, in Thailand. But Laos, Laos was great. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to go up north to the, the Hmong areas. Yeah. We went to a, a city called Vang Vian, which is about two hours from, from yeah. the city. Um, and they, and they, they were still pretty old school with the way they live and, mm. and, and how everything went. But I got a chance to meet a couple people there because... A friend's family was there. Yeah, Her, uh, his aunts were there, so we we got a chance to kind of see the, a small, you know, a small perspective of what it was like to yeah. to live in the mountains. But yeah, um, yeah next time, I mean, I want to go up north, Luang Prabang, yeah. Sin Kwan, you know, yeah. Yeah. up there. I think a lot of Hmong people live up there, and yeah. so we missed out on that opportunity. But hopefully, yeah. when we go back, we can we can yeah. do. Luang Prabang is actually like pretty interesting. It's first of all, 
So in Prabang, it's really nice to get a lot of really cool sites to check out. But uh, I was really surprised when I went to Long Prabang, just how many uh, Westerners there were. Like Long Prabang is pretty like I didn't know, but apparently that like Westerners, like Mika people, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah like okay. Europeans and stuff. Okay. Like apparently Long Prabang is like one of the hot spots where everybody likes to go and party and stuff. Wow. Okay. And uh, so when I went, yeah, yeah, I was really surprised because I thought I wouldn't see too many. Westerners in Laos, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Long Prabang is the one city where I saw a lot of Europeans and, and okay. Americans and stuff like that. So that was kind of yeah. interesting. But yeah, it was nice. So and you went up there for you guys went, you did a concert. Uh yeah. So originally, um, I was telling Peng, um, originally we were supposed to do concerts in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, those kind of fell through. Uh, didn't happen. Um. And then for this one, I knew someone who was throwing that concert in Laos. So he, he, he had invited me early before, too. But I was like, I don't know if I can make it because I might be in Thailand already yeah. on, a, on a different tour. And so yeah. when the tours fell through, then he was like, you know, if you still want to perform, you know, you can just jump on. Yeah. And again, it was a great opportunity. A uh, bunch of legend, yeah. legendary that artists. Was in Laos? Uh, that was in Vien Vien? In that was Vien in uh, Vien Tian. In Vien Tian. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yep. okay. so the big city, uh, small city outside of Vien Tian called Sam Ket. Okay. Uh, they had a pretty big Hmong New Year there, too. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they had a whole week of concerts, but I was part of a uh, part of the bigger one. Wow, so, okay. that's cool. Was it uh, was it like a Hmong New Year celebration concert? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they they because celebrated for about a week. Yeah. Um, and so every night they had a concert. Yeah. Um, but for this one, uh, yeah, luckily they I was, was blessed like enough to get the opportunity to be part of a a great lineup. Yeah. So, um, I also performed on a different night too, where where there was less people. But yeah. But for that first one, it, yeah. was, it was a great experience. How so. was how was that to like share the stages with like some of your like childhood like heroes uh, in in the music world? Like, it, like talk to me about that. Yeah. Um. So some of the artists that were there were like Lu Ya, yeah. Sata, Hands yeah. Band, uh, Damn, Ding from legend, Hands Band. Yeah. yeah. Um. ICU. I don't know if you guys yeah. heard of ICU. Uh -huh. uh, he's pretty big out there. Um. And then a bunch of younger artists yeah. like Akulor, NT1, a bunch of artists coming up. Yeah. Um, from all over Thailand, Laos, Vietnam. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and it's me, another singer from America, but he's he's from Laos too, but he's he lives here now. Yeah. So technically, I was the only American-born artist there, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and and they 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 treated me like a friend too. Um, yeah. Because these guys in the Hmong world, they're to me at least, they're they're pretty legendary, you know. Yeah. So they're yeah. they're, they're, they're really out there. Yeah. Um, and and they're a lot older than me too, but they they treated me like a almost like a brother or a son, you know. Took yeah. me in. Um, just took care of me that night, and and we 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 threw a pretty big concert. Uh, I would say maybe like four or five thousand people came out, oh, wow. which is pretty yeah. big, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in America, it's it's almost hard to get that number, but out there, yeah. um, and their setup is pretty cool too. Where like, uh, there's a stage, and all the seating they 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 will sell all the all the seating, but on the outside, whoever can't afford can just come and watch as well. Oh, okay. so nice. okay. so I thought I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, so it's yeah. inclusive um, to everybody. Now you ain't gotta exactly. just pay the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get it in. Yeah. Yep. So that was a great how experience. Was the, how was it similar or different than playing to a crowd here with a crowd over there? Yeah. Is it like what what felt different about that yeah, crowd I think, or was uh, it the same? No, it's definitely different. I thought they were more chill. Yeah. Um, in America. <laughs> I don't want to say we have crazy fans, but we have yeah. fans who they'll come on stage, <laughs> they'll give you money, give you beer, give you a shout or something, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. Um, they'll, yeah. And they'll Much stay up there with open, you all yeah. night, right? <laughs> they'll Parti stay up there. Partially, American, <coughs> partially yeah. American culture, though, you know? Like, American culture here, right. like, if I like you, like, let's say I saw Swami on stage and, like, I liked him, I'd be like, yo, Swami! And then he got <laughs> off stage and be like, yo, let me get you a shout, blah, 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 versus, yes. Definitely Asian culture, Southeast Asian culture is much more timid. Yep. So I yeah. could definitely see how like they they like you, but they ain't gonna come Maybe bother more you. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of your space. So they definitely sat back, enjoy the show. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. they drink a lot of beer, a lot of beer Lao. So yeah. every table just full oh. of beer. Yeah. Sorry, um, I was supposed to grab you some too. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I, I think I've, I've had enough for the weekend already. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're, they're definitely more chill. But I think. They're respectful too, you know, yeah. of, of just kind of watching you and sitting back and enjoying the show. Yeah, uh, which was different. Um, but after that, you know, they, they'll come and say hi, take pictures and things like that too. Yeah. So, yeah. I bet that's gotta be crazy. So, like, how was it? Like, was there anything like, um, like, spiritual? Like, just to be there in the motherland, like, you like that's our homeland, mm -hmm. and you're performing. Uh, in our native tongue, like that's got to be special, right? Like, it de it definitely felt surreal. Um, yeah. 
I think even my first couple of days being there, I, I hate to admit this, but our hotel is right off of the Mekong Kong River. Yeah. So the first two mornings, like, I got emotional, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. as a man, I hate to admit that I cried yeah, or, like, yeah, tears yeah. fell. But, like, I woke up and it just, I, I didn't think about it, right? Yeah. It just it just started coming. And I'm just yeah. like, you know, I, I started thinking about the stories that my parents would tell me yeah. or, you know, that you hear in books or, yeah. you know, all the pandas, things like that, right? Yeah. yeah. But, um... Yeah, the first two days there was was definitely emotional, and then yeah, just getting the opportunity to perform out there. I mean, yeah, it, it was cool. different, and it's, it was a great experience, cool experience. You know, something yeah. to remember for for a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Did you talk to any of uh, the Hmong people there and like their way of life, uh, and compare in comparison to like um, uh, our our lifestyle here in America? Um, for me, I didn't really get a chance to really dive deep into conversations okay. with too many people about lifestyle wise, yeah. but they, they, they would tell, they, they, they would tell what they, they do, you know, what, or what they yeah. can. Um, some of my guys, they're, they're more talkative. I'm more on the quiet side, so I didn't really conversate okay. with as many people, but just kind of hearing their conversations, then they definitely yeah. shared different things, how, you know, how they live, how they grew up, yeah. what they do for, for work and things like that, right. Yeah. To, to generate that. So, yeah. but I, I wish, um, Again, I had more opportunity to just dive into deep conversations mm-hmm. with more people. But yeah, yeah, because uh, my sister, um, she went and she visited a, a, a Hmong f- family in Vietnam when she went to go visit, like recently. And some of the things they were saying was they were like, you know, um, like they almost felt bad for us because we're here, you know, because they're like, you know, like they're there, like. I think we we would say like we say that we're the lucky ones because we got to come here. But I think in their eyes, they're kind of like, no, like you guys look lost out there. That that's what they were saying to my sister was just like, yeah, it looks like you guys went out there and kind of lost a little bit of the culture and yada yada. Yeah. And so she kind of like felt bad for my sister, and she was just like, yeah, like um, yeah, it was tough here, but you know we. We, we kind of found our way and yada yada. And she was a, a monk person living in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Uh, and granted, she was like a business owner. And maybe I don't know. I don't know her, what her financial situation was. But like when she said that, when my sister told me what she said to her, I was just like, it was like an eye opener because I was like, and just like hearing our stories and our journey, the fight to come here, and then just knowing like our struggles, trying to learn English, right, uh, and then trying to navigate this whole world, right. And I I, I wonder sometimes like. You know, like if they didn't make that trip, how how would our lives have been? Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. I don't like I, I don't know if it's the same for you. But when I went over there, what it helped, what it closed for me, like what it uh, it connected the dots for me is that, like for example, my wife told me once because I don't really speak Hmong, I'm not great at it. My wife was like, if you don't speak Hmong well, then Hmong language is gonna die with you. And I really believed her, right? I said, yeah, you're right. If I don't speak Hmong, Hmong language is going to die with me. But then I went to Laos, and I met hella Hmong people over there, and I'm like, nah, the Hmong language is now dead. It ain't going to die through me. I could come back and live here. Like, legit. I could just go in there, open my eyes at, like, yeah, okay, we're We're not the only Hmong people in the world. Yeah, exactly. We're not the only Hmong people in the world. Like, there's Hmong people here. There's Hmong people there. Like, and, and, like, the, the Hmong people that I met... Uh, the one family that I met over there, they had a house with like five acres or so. Yeah. They had a hotel. Yeah. And like they were good. Like they're yeah. good. Like they were good by 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 our standards. They were killing it. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, all right. So yeah, it's not like this image that I put in my head of like, yeah. well, I'm gonna get to Laos and it's gonna be these little shacks and shit. Mm. Nah, man. I got there and I was like, yo, these people are doing like killer out here. <laughs> yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. This is also the perspective of a tourist, right? Yeah, yeah. I also came in with the eye of a tourist. Just because you have a hotel yeah. and stuff, maybe it doesn't mean as yeah. that much. And, and then it also doesn't mean that there aren't some people living in the shacks, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and and that there's also parts of Laos rules and regulations that you probably hate too, you yeah, know? Yeah. Because you're from that place. So I think I romanticized a little bit because I, I yeah. came as a tourist. Yeah, yeah. But it definitely made me realize that, like, I could... Definitely could still come live here and yeah. like, but I don't know. These people seem just as happy as I am, maybe even happier yeah. than I am. Yeah. You know, so I I yeah. think it closed that loop for me to like go there and just be like, mm. okay, it's cool here too. Like in Laos, yeah. like it definitely opened my eyes to to all the people that have not been to Laos that's ever wondering. Like I encourage you guys to to go. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure for well, you. What was your take? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, um, I felt the same way. I think I've always had this image in my head that Laos is maybe still behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and in some parts, they still are. Yeah, but yeah. As, as two mentioned, when you get there, you see it for yourself. I mean, there's people who are progressive, who are living a great life, yeah. or who, yeah. like, who are happy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have friends that they came over here from Laos, and I, I asked them, do you guys ever want to live in America? And they actually, they actually said no. Yeah, they don't yeah. want to. Yeah. Um, but you don't know how they feel until you get there, um, yeah. and your perspective changes. Um, so, yeah, my time there, um, I saw a lot of successful business people, a lot of entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, the hustle culture out there is real. Everybody's working. Yeah, you know, everybody you know yeah. everybody's. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, it's definitely a place where I, f- I feel like people can, can really go and enjoy it now, you yeah, know, and, yeah, and live. Yeah. And, and so you think you can ever live there? I think I could uh, yeah, going right, going yeah, there. Right. Like I actually miss it a lot. I don't know yeah. if, if you guys follow my Facebook. I miss yeah, Laos yeah, a lot. Yeah, I, saw that. Yeah. I was like, I think I was like, where, every time I see you post, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. man, I think a piece of him yeah. stayed over there. Still yeah, drinking beer. Big, yeah, big yeah. piece of me yeah. stayed there. I think I, I left a piece of me out there. But mm. yeah, just from from everything, from the food to the culture to the way they live, the way they have mm. fun, the way they party, even. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't. I didn't think that was gonna be that fun. Yeah. Or I didn't. Originally, we weren't even going to spend that much time in Laos yeah. because we didn't know much about it. We thought yeah. we, we didn't think it was going to be as progressive as Thailand. Yeah. So we had this whole trip planned for Thailand, but we, we eventually extended our stay in Laos because yeah. we enjoyed it so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and and they know how to have a good time too. Oh, yeah, um, it looked like it from your videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like you guys were having a blast. I was surprised there. how much fun they could have. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, out, out in America, I mean, you know, we have concerts parties bars you know yeah um they have the same things too but it's like every bar the karaoke bar yeah every bar everybody's so nice the yeah. staff are so attentive yeah. uh, and you meet so many cool people you know yeah, yeah. um so that, that was one thing i was so surprised that laos and thailand they're, they're so welcoming and yep. they're yeah. so respectful and yes. i felt yeah. i felt like there was no shadiness there was no mm. you know no bad feelings there was no bad vibes it was just mm. Uh, I mean, obviously, anywhere you go, um, it could it could get dangerous. But right, I, I just have shady characters yeah, yeah. The whole time we were there, it was nothing but love, and um, I, I actually really enjoyed. Yeah, that I felt part. that too. Yeah. I thought Southeast Asia to me was much more of a. Uh, I felt like, I don't know, it's just a different vibe how they are with you as people versus in the U.S. You could talk to anybody, right? The U.S. is a very open culture where, like, we, we can... Americans, we're great at being on the surface. Like, mm-hmm. Yo, what up, man? Oh, now you're a Vikings fan? <laughs> oh, man, me too. Like, we're really, like, we're like that, but I think it ends there. Versus in those countries, it's like, it's, uh, I feel like it's more at a human level where we're just, like, the connection. And I don't know, maybe yeah. it's because we're just in Southeast Asia. I don't know if it's cultural, religion, you know, having Buddhist type stuff, like religion, a little bit different than Christianity and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the culture is definitely, yeah, it felt a little bit different over there. And, and, and yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah. Anyway, no, yeah. but I, th- I think you're, you it guys are definitely is. right about that. Because, like, again, like, I was in Thailand. My experience was different because I did a lot of the touristy, touristy stuff. stuff yeah. But, like, yeah, like, they were everybody was so inviting. Like, I ended up, we ended up. Like, uh, we went scuba diving, and then we ended up just meeting a bunch of, like, college students there, uh, like, or, or local Thai college students, and they were, like, you know, we added each other on Facebook, they were, like, super friendly to, to us, like, we just had a blast, like, there was never a moment where, like, I felt, like, unsafe or yeah. uneasy mm-hmm. about anything. I mean, my wife probably, and she, she felt a little bit different because, I mean, she's a woman, and, you know, uh, for sure, but, like, there was a, like, I genuinely had a good time, and I genuinely there was never a moment where I was just like, yeah, I felt any kind of shadiness or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can definitely, you know, I can definitely, I would love to one day, like, live there or spend, like, more time there. I think that was one thing I regret was, like, because it was so fast-paced. We had so many things planned. Like, we were moving, 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 and I never really got to really sit there and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about the food. Tell me yeah, about the, I yeah. I like it out there. Uh, I, I love the food. Uh, yeah. I mean, their food. A lot of the food is spicy out there, but it's it's, it's based on on like noodles, yeah. uh, papaya, and pak kro pao was like the, the the popular food out there. So yeah. we spent a lot of time eating a lot of Thai boat. So what was that last thing? Pak pak kro pao. It's like uh, you can you can have different kind of meats: chicken, beef, okay, um, pork, um, and then it's cooked with with holy basil. Oh, okay. uh, with, with the with the fried egg on top. It's kind of like rice. Uh, like our pad you or pad uh, like pad Thai kind of. I, I, think, I think out here they call it pakra pao too, but oh, okay. I feel like it's not as as big out here. Um, 
because out there you barely see pad thai. I think a pad thai is popular in America, but for yeah. example, when I went yeah. out there, um, we didn't we didn't see that as much. Yeah. But it, it, I mean, it's something similar to that, but it's yeah, uh, yeah pretty much just okay. your meat. Maybe I'm just holy basil. Yeah. Did you yeah. guys hit a lot of? Uh, I mean, did you guys do a lot of the food markets? I mean, that's kind of what they do, right? That's yeah, we. Uh, that's what you do out there. I felt like we didn't get a chance to really enjoy the night markets or, oh, or the night, really? you know, the, yeah. uh, we didn't go out to eat as much because there were so many welcoming people who would cook for us, yeah. Yeah. took care of us. Uh, yeah, so yeah you got the VIP treatment. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I mean, they, they loved us a lot yeah. for sure. Yeah. We had a lot of home meals, home cooked meals, which was great. But um, cool. some of my friends are also afraid to, to eat. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the night market <laughs> food, just out. in case uh, they, you know, they had yeah. stomach issues. Because that, that was one of the biggest things. Cause yeah. Not having a normal toilet was was a challenge for us. We yeah. didn't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't want to explore squatter, as much yeah, as, yeah. as we should have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think next time when we go, since we're used to the the system now, the water system, the bathroom yeah. system, maybe we'll, we'll want to try more food, yeah, yeah. To, more exotic food. To but, people yeah. who haven't been to Laos, um, depending on where you are, but yeah, a lot of times, first of all, the toilet is a squatter. You got to yeah. just straight it's a up hole. <laughs> yeah. Squat over a hole. Yeah, it's just a hole. And then, yeah. It's yeah. A hole. And then to flush it, you don't pull yeah. a lever. You fill a you fill a yeah. a bucket full of water, and you <laughs> gravity force feed yeah. your turd down the hole. Yeah. The water actually comes from the mons a lot of times, depending on where you are, and it comes down. So, and it's not as like uh, we, we make our bathrooms so tidy in America, like yeah. tiles and yeah. like you could like, you could like I could play on my phone in the bathroom for like two hours in America. Yeah. You probably wouldn't do that in Laos. It's like yeah. you take your turn and get the hell out of there, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's yeah. sometimes it's dark, it's like a just a small light. So the bathroom experience is definitely like a yeah. very different experience. And like you said, if you start going ham on like street food that your body because I, I I actually never had the shits when I was there, so I was very yeah. blessed. Yeah. Did not have this shits while I went there. Stomach. I also yeah. went to the doctor prior to leaving, oh, and they like yeah. prescribed me everything. Which, but I didn't even take any of it. But uh, but I did bring it with me just in case. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. I, that's the uh, that's a piece that I didn't even really think, but I did pay attention a little bit better because yeah. I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, no, nah, I'm waiting till I get to a hotel that's got yeah. a regular bathroom yeah. to take a shit. I'm not doing this <laughs> in this one. My, my, and I actually got away the whole time. Yeah. 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 My yeah. wife did that same thing. I but got away the entire were, time. Um, Got lucky. Like, we rode a train from, like, Bangkok to, like, Chiang Mai. And uh, on the train, is literally just a hole. Yeah. So if you look down there, you see the train tracks and oh, things, like, see. flying by. <laughs> and uh, and so, but it, it was it was a cool exper- experience. Um, but, yeah, like, the food was rough, too. Like, my, my wife had a hard time dealing with that. Yeah. Like, she, she was sick bit. almost every day. Oh, yeah. 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 And so, but, like, me, like, I don't know. I eat shit off the ground yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. And... But and also like um, visually, like if you're if hygiene is a big thing to you, yeah. Um, like the food is just out. It's just yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know mm-hmm. how how it was in Laos, but in Thailand, like the night markets, you got meats. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. out there. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so and if you want something, they're just cooking it right there for you, right. which is great. But yeah, if you're uh, my wife couldn't eat yes. any of the street. Some food. people find that fun. Yeah. And some people find that unsanitary. So it just depends yeah, how you are. Yeah, like me, right. I find it fun. When yeah, I see it, I'm I, like, uh, yo, let me try that, that thing. That <laughs> yeah. you I mean, shoot, I, I ate a rat that was like literally cooking in like a little <laughs> cement thing yeah. with just, uh, with just um, what the hell you call those black things that you start a barbecue with? Charcoal? With charcoal, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just charcoal and like salt pepper on a rat. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, I'm, 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 a like rat? yo, I'm like, yeah. yo, let me get that. Like, I want to try that, yeah. right? So for me, that stuff's interesting. Yeah. But like, if you really like your stuff nice and clean and yeah. tidy, and you just see that yeah. little, you know how they always spin that one thing over the food with the little, like yeah. little stringy, yeah. Yeah, just so they <laughs> yeah. don't get flies. Right. I could see yeah. how like, if you're a picky eater, yeah. I think Asia would be, or at least Southeast Asia, it would it's be tough. It yeah. would be, yeah. it would be yeah. tough yeah. to eat. Yeah. Yeah, in Laos, it was it was a challenge because the. It was it was very dusty in Laos, mm. yeah. Um, yeah. And so a lot of the food, they're like, hey, don't even the locals, they're like, hey, let's not buy food from the market. It's a little too dusty, you yeah. know. Oh, okay, so so they know like they, yeah. they know too. Yeah. I mean, they're probably used to it, but for us, yeah, they're like, hey, we don't want you guys to get sick. So yeah, yeah. Um, but I that could ruin your trip, like. Uh, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was blessed too. I, I was like too when I went there. I was blessed, no sickness, no, no sickness, stomach issues. Yeah. But I did stay away from the very spicy food. Yeah. Uh, my guys, they, they they always ate the spicy food, so they they struggled a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I actually never got a chance to use a squatter because I always waited till I got back yep. to the hotel. Yeah. But I never had issues, so I was fine. Yeah. So I'll, I'll hold it in the whole day, and I, I wouldn't yeah. have a problem at all. So I was I was blessed too. 
So th- that was about two weeks of just staying away from squatters and yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, kind e- even like the spray. Some 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 toilets they it's a toilet, but they don't have toilet paper. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we loaded up on toilet paper and white webs, but if yeah. you don't have that, then they give you a little bidet spray. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which which I tried it once and I I I hate like it. Like it. <laughs> I just didn't I, know how I to use it. It's amazing. I yeah, just yeah. didn't know how to use it right. So. Yeah. They explained it to me, but I, uh, yeah, when I used it, I was it was pretty uncomfortable. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hear it's to. amazing. Uh, yeah. you know. It is a whole like different that's becoming experience. a thing here now too in the yeah. West. Yeah, like, yeah. Everyone says how good it is. So you were there for t- two, three weeks? Just Total? two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, I yeah. wished uh, we would have went longer. You you think two weeks is a long time, but once you kind of fill out your, well, your, your schedule, your travel and time and is like almost well. And you, the, you, you, I mean, that's correct. You went there uh, and performed, so I'm right. sure your schedule was a lot more like you're moving a lot more yeah that, that was the hard part kind of just preparing for that too and and kind of preparing for for performing meeting people and everything that led up to that but um yeah i, th- I think next time if we were to go again i think three to four weeks is probably mm-hmm. more ideal yeah. for me uh some people i mean they're, they're busy with their lives so one two weeks might be okay yeah. but i think for me maybe three weeks would, would be ideal you, yeah. need, you need at least like a week just to adjust mentally man like oh, time okay. wise yeah. like uh, when we went I, yeah, I mean, we're talking like a 12, 13 hour difference over there, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it takes you like at least five, six days to like be sleeping when you're supposed yeah. to be sleeping, not waking up in the middle of the night thinking it's the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and, and the heat and the humidity is like a different, it's yeah. different out there. Like when we were out there, we had to take breaks like midday. Um, and some, some days, like, <laughs> you know, we'd come and take a little break and, you know, we just fall asleep and we won't wake up till like eight <laughs> o'clock and we're like, yeah. oh shoot! All right, now we gotta like try to go and do something real quick. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 completely did that, different. Did that hit there. you pretty hard, the jet lag, the, especially with you having to perform? Yeah, um, I think once we got there, it, it was definitely challenging to adjust to everything um, and just kind of learning, even like learning the currency, learning how to get yeah, around. Yeah, right, yeah. so you're figuring things out while you're super tired, jet lag, and each yeah. night we were only getting couple hours of sleep yeah. we, we'll, yeah. we'll hang out till two three in the morning and by seven we're up eating breakfast and we felt fine as far yeah. as we're getting up I, w- I was surprised that we were able to get up that early but yeah. um we, we definitely didn't sleep as much as we wanted to um yeah. and just kind of having to 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 get back to normal yeah. <laughs> i don't know if it's the vacation or just the idea of being on vacation but like when when i was down there yeah i didn't feel like as fatigued. Yeah. Like uh, I think it's just something just about, about the air that. out there. Yeah. Like our bodies are made for that. And I think it's a piece of excitement because you're yeah. on vacation. There you go. Because yeah. I, I think if you were doing like imagine if you had to do that trip all the time for a business, at some point you'd be like, yo, mm-hmm. this is not working. Yeah. But I think when you're going on vacation, you're like, get up because you can kind of get up whenever you yeah. want. Like it's your choice. Yeah. Right? And you don't want to waste a day away. Yeah, yeah just, exactly. You, know, you don't want to yeah. waste your time either. Yeah. Because you're traveling like uh, like an American. You're like, oh, I gotta get up and get some shit. <laughs> yeah. Just, and, and see as much as I can when, when you're there, but yeah, yeah, no. And then uh, share what you want as much as you want about this, but like, um, you know, you were supposed to go out there for a tour in Thailand, right? So was was the trip paid for, or or what they did they cover most of that or some of that, or how do, how does that work out? Yeah, so originally I was gonna do. Uh, tour in Thailand, mm-hmm. um, but that fell through. We were gonna do another tour in Thailand that fell through, so two fell through. Mm-hmm. <coughs> <coughs> but those were gonna be all paid for. Yeah, uh, flights, hotels, everything was gonna be covered. But Holy unfortunately, shit. it fell through. Yeah. Uh, so for for the trip to to Laos and and a little bit to Thailand that I went this year, uh, unfortunately for this one, I had to cover it, which mm-hmm. was fine. Yeah. Um, that way, I don't think I had to be tied down to really any promoters right, or anything. Yeah, that for day. sure, for yeah. sure. So yeah. I could kind of be more free and do what I, you know, what I want to do. But, I mean, you know, I would have been thankful to have everything paid for. Yeah. Because uh, it's 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 not cheap to fly no. there. It's not cheap no. to spend time there. I mean, well, maybe it's cheap to spend time once you get there. But I think yeah. just, to just, get there, just to get yeah, there, to it's, get it's, there, it's spendy, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, for this trip, I, I, I cover my own expenses. Okay. Um, and so... Yeah, unfortunately, the other two events in Thailand, it, it fell through. Um, yeah. Just on the business side of things and yeah. Um, yeah. just not preparing ourselves enough to, to sign on. So Yeah, because yeah. um, we're starting to see that, right, where a lot of promoters are getting, promoters here are getting international artists, and then that is uh, true. I guess over That's there, like they're, getting, they're getting artists newer. from here to go over there. Yeah. Um, so, like, one, that can't be cheap, uh, and then two, like, how freaking, like, how lucky are we to live in a world where 
like we can do that where we can sing and do our arts here and then you know yeah, you have get an expense paid for yeah. that to go down there you have two fan base you know did, did, yeah. did, did they all know and listen to your songs over there a little bit like what'd you get did they know you were some, some people knew who I were yeah, a okay. good amount um, okay. but I mean there's just so many people there yeah. I, I, so many Hmong people there uh, that, that didn't know me but there's just so many Hmong people in general but uh, I see the numbers on Facebook and YouTube yeah. um, mm-hmm. and, and Laos Laos is the second biggest after after the oh, US so, uh, on wow. your statistics yeah, yeah on the statistics who, of Facebook and, yeah. and, and, and YouTube of who's watching and following listening because yeah, yeah. I was just watching one of your music video uh, one of your songs yesterday mm-hmm. I think you've got like your biggest one's like 1.2 million views or something that's yeah. pretty crazy yeah, 1.4 which I'm thankful uh, 1. for 1.4 yeah that's insane. get it right <laughs> dude <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's a huge difference enough. that's 200,000 yeah. views yeah. yeah that's insane when, when did you release that song? yeah it's called uh, Talk Lo Luka I released it about Maybe three. It's been three years now. Did um, it just take off like boom? Like yeah, first month? surprisingly, I didn't expect that at all. Uh, there was a moment in life where I felt a little down, and and I wrote that song, mm-hmm. I recorded it, put it out there, and then um, yeah, it just kind of blew up. I mean, because yeah. because before that, I kind of I t- kind of took a hiatus or a break from music and just supporting the younger artists, and then yeah, um, I decided hey, let's 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 do songs again. And when I did that, it just gave me a bunch of opportunities just to travel again. Everybody was booking me just because of that song, yeah, which, which is yeah, yeah, which is yeah. crazy. You know, yeah. it takes it one crazy. song for for opportunities for you to yeah. yeah. So I'm definitely thankful for that. Yeah, what do we've think, oh go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what do you think it is with like you know like an artist you can release so many songs, but then for some reason just one hits or like yeah like for some reason everybody can we can collectively agree as people that that song we all like. Yeah. But then the rest, even if it's kind of a similar sound. Similar story. For some reason, we don't like that one, mm-hmm. right? We just like this one. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you're the one that creates <laughs> the song. So, how do you like? Have you? Do you when know you think when you about have a that, banger? When you think I feel about like that, I feel like it's hard to pinpoint the reason how the reason a song can really yeah. blow up. It just hits. does. Yeah. But yeah. I think when you write a good song, sometimes people don't even like it, right? You think, <laughs> yeah. okay, this yeah. song's gonna be a hit. And and me and my music friends, we talk about that a lot. Like, you think a song that you make is gonna be a hit, and nobody listens to it right and then yeah. a song you probably don't care about all of a sudden you just put it out there gets Take a million off. views and it's yeah. so uh, it's it's definitely it's definitely hard it's to pinpoint the reason science. why but yeah. it's just i guess sometimes when it hits people just you yeah. know enjoy it and yeah. so you as a artist like what is your creative process like when writing a song like uh, i know you have said that you were experiencing i guess like a down moment when you wrote that song like um like, what is your creative process? Do you have to, like, have some kind of, I guess, life yeah, experiment, yeah, yeah. experience, or, or, yeah, feeling? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely easier to write songs with, with life experiences, your own mm-hmm. experiences. Yeah. But, um, or if you, maybe you talk to someone and they can share a deep experience with mm-hmm. you. Um, and definitely, I feel like definitely when you're down, I feel like you're, so, you're, you're more motivated, right? Like, yeah. you're more motivated to write. Maybe you're motivated to hit the gym. You're motivated mm-hmm. to get better mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. Um, in, in that perspective, but um, yeah, my creative process, I, I, I try to write as much as I can whenever yeah. I think of a song. Some days it just hits at two in the morning and you yeah. just got to write lyrics or yeah. some days you're listening to a song and okay, this, you know, this, this topic is interesting. Yeah. Um, so this it's, it's a variety of different ways how I make music, but um, yeah, I think and a lot of inspiration is just kind of uh, bouncing ideas off of maybe friends and mm. artists too. Yeah. Um, and then we, t- we talked to, uh, you know, we've had a few artists on and uh, they talk about like the community of Hmong artists. And like, I think like it was really cool because like you, when you blew up, like, and then you were, you were close, you're, you're close to like David Yang and you guys kind of blew up together. Uh, like talk about like the, the community, like how much inspiration do you guys draw each other? Cause you guys are pretty tight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think. When we first started, I feel like the Hmong music scene was was not as inclusive. Everyone, mm-hmm. everyone before us, maybe they, they were doing their own thing. Social yeah. media didn't really blow up yet. Yeah. So when I when I really started, YouTube was brand new. Yeah, um, Facebook was starting up, and so I think connecting through social media has really made us all more. Um, just just I guess built that friendship within us. Yeah, or the opportunity to get to know each other. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I was blessed enough when when growing up, I I used to follow a bunch of these Asian artists, Filipino artists on YouTube, and, mm-hmm. and they they built a community of artists, right? Mm-hmm. They'll collab, make songs together, and and I've always wanted that. 
but at that time, I felt like the Hmong community wasn't as present with, with doing that. Yeah. Um, so when, when I first started, my, my idea was just to connect with everyone. Yeah. Um, so I did small things like gatherings for artists from all over the states to meet during like J4 weekend. Or yeah. um, in 2013, I did like a super cool meetup where like a bunch of us artists just got together. Young young YouTube artists, uprising artists. Yeah. Um, came to to meet each other, network, and from there, I felt like a lot of people started connecting. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, we had with the boom of social media. Yeah. Um, we all we all support each other and we all listen to each other's stuff and concerts. They always book some of us to the same concerts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so yeah, that's kind of a cool deal. Yeah. Community of, uh, yeah. And you are, you guys are like, uh, there's a lot of y'all now, man. Every time yeah. I go on YouTube, I'm like, it's like a new Hmong yeah, artist. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another yeah. new one. And then, and then the music videos have like stepped up, like the producers, the people that direct the stuff, like yeah. everything is Quality stepping up to, yep. to being better. And I'm like, I'm like, man, like literally, and De- David Yang is just my re- just my reference, right? So David Yang's like 2011, 12, 13. Like that's who I'm listening to a little bit, and then mm-hmm. and then now, ten years later, bro, there's like fuck. You play, you type like yeah. long new music and 23, <laughs> and boom, there's yeah, kids and they're everywhere. all good, and they're all solid yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And I guess like now, just hearing you said that, like yeah, you guys did kind of start that wave of like like supporting each other like yeah er- earlier on um so like pro- yeah props to you guys yeah because so when there's a new artist now like um uh, do, do like if if there's a new artist coming up like do you like do you feel obligation to like reach out to them like wh- wh- what is what is your role i guess like because you, you're one of the old old heads now right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're one of the ogs in, in this space yeah, definitely. I think uh, if if we see the hard work that they put in, definitely, yeah, you yeah. know, as simple as a like on the video, share the video, right. you know. Yeah. Um, and I've been blessed enough to, whenever I see these new artists, they'll be like, hey, oh, hey, you know, I love your music, you know, yeah. I've been watching you for a long time. It makes me feel a little old, but, yeah. Yeah. but they'll tell me like, oh, you know, when I was a kid, I was I was watching you guys, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah I think I do, I do feel an obligation to at least try to support them in small ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and a lot of artists don't know this, but I think, being so well connected, we a lot of us artists, we we um, behind the scenes, we'll, we'll we'll say, hey, we'll tell promoters, hey, this kid is good or this person is right, working right, hard, yeah. right? Just trying to connect them, and and we, and we don't have to tell them like, hey, we're we're connecting you with these artists, I mean, with these promoters, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think if they work hard, definitely if they're talented, they work hard. I, I like to put in a good word with or for them, yeah. with, yeah. with 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 uh, promoters or or people who run shows or events, so yeah. Are you, are you still keeping it? Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't know what stage you are in your in your music career, but are you? Uh, how are you separating like the artist side, right, versus the business side of it? Is it? Mm. Do you just operate it like as a passion project, and then what comes comes, what doesn't come doesn't come, and, and I'm just having fun riding the ride, or are you more in a period in time right now where it's like, hey, let's see gigs that we can book. Where can we do that? You know, because like yeah. some artists are trying to grow. Like, mm-hmm. yo, I'm putting yeah. out there. I got one video that I hit. All right, cool. Boom. Dopamine hit. Let's go. Let's keep yeah. going. And then some are just like, nah, I'm just going with the flow. Yeah. And if it hits, it hits. Good. Cool. And, you know, people have different amb- ambitions, views, visions of what they want to do with their music, mm-hmm. whether it takes them far or not. Like, how do you look at your, like, in, in at this moment in time? Because mm-hmm. it's been a minute that you've been doing it. it. Like, how are you looking at your music right now? Yeah, for me personally, I'm just kind of enjoying the ride. Um, Yeah, I know a lot of people, they're you know, they into the numbers, they're into the stats, they're into making sure they're growing in certain ways. Um, Yeah, for me, I I, I feel like I wish I would have started that younger, um, keeping track of what shows you're doing, opportunities, keeping track of maybe the money you make Mm -hmm. or... Um, yeah, just your opportunities um, to grow. But yeah, I think I, I'm at the age where I'm just enjoying what's. I mean, I, I don't feel like I want to do this forever, but yeah. I just, yeah, you know, like I said, I took a hiatus and I thought that I was done just to support these younger artists, but I came back a little bit and now, you know, getting the opportunities, I, I'm still kind of continuing. But yeah, just really enjoying the ride for me personally. Yeah. Um. So it's it's because for me, like, I, I've tried to get a manager before. Yeah. Uh, oh, to damn, to understand yeah. the business side, because the business side is a di- is a different beast, right? Right. Like, right. Um, and, and for me, I feel like I'm not intelligent enough to, to fully do both, right? Be an artist and be and be yeah. a businessman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I've definitely reached out for help before. Um, yeah. and, and, and this helped uh, me through 
you know, on, the, on the business side of things, it's definitely helped me. Yeah. Uh, and I built great relationships with people who were able to, um, you know, hold those conversations about the business side of things yeah, for me. Yeah, Because um, the business side is definitely different. Like, like if I was the, the bi- like a manager for an artist, like, I'm fighting for you every single dollar I can get. Like, yeah. yo, my dude ain't coming out here unless y'all pay. How much you paying the other guy? Mm-hmm. My dude's got this many views. Like, yo, y'all, y'all got to pay at least what's, you know, like, you got to be yeah. able to talk like that. Yeah. Yeah. And when they yeah. say no, you got to be able to say, cool, then he ain't coming. Yeah. Y'all missing yeah. out. Yeah. Like, and make them feel like they're missing out. Like, yeah. you're missing out on my guy. Right. I'm just telling you, you're going to regret this two years down the road when you could have got him now and built that relationship. So, yeah, yeah. that is definitely, um, and I'm learning that because I own a business, obviously. So, mm-hmm. it's a thing that, like, I am constantly yeah. Having yeah. to learn as to oh, yeah. like, there's two different sides, you know. There's two the detailer or just like you. Yeah. There's the beekeeper guy. But then at a certain point, when someone's like, "I want an order," okay, what are we talking about here? Yeah, how many numbers? That that is tough because we talk about yeah. that a lot. Where it's like sometimes as the artist or the creative, you're like, you just want to book it. Yeah, you just want to mm-hmm. do your thing. But then like, and you don't know how to have those those conversations about uh, about making sure you get paid, you know, a, a good amount and and. Sometimes we're just so happy that somebody yeah. wants us to come like and do this. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so we'd, we, you know, so we'll we do, do free it, yeah. stuff. We're just, you know, we're just more, you know, we're just happy to do it. Um, are there, in, in the Hmong music space, are there record labels or like record companies or like people There's that. There's definitely promotion groups, no? Because sometimes I see the yeah. YouTube videos where okay. I'm like, oh, this guy is releasing all these people. Like, okay. There's a lot, there's a lot of promotion groups. Uh, yeah. There were record labels uh, to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not at the level of mainstream record right, labels, yeah. right? It's just not as much funds to generate through that. But yeah. but there, there were a few. Um, yeah. Right now, they're not as, as out there and prevalent, okay. you know? Um, they probably still exist. Yeah. But, yeah, right now, people are just running as promotion groups now. Yeah. And so, like, as a new artist, would you say, like, because um, if you're running your own thing, like, you own your own content, right? And I think if you're with a record label... The idea is that they own your content, right? Uh, would you recommend like new artists to just do their own promotion, their own thing, just so that they one hundred percent own all of their content? Um, yeah, and like, I, you know, just speak to some. I guess some of the finances. We don't want to hear actual numbers or mm-hmm, anything, mm-hmm. but like, I guess a, a new new artist coming up right now. Like, what would you tell them as far as like some of those financial advices? Yeah, I think in the in the monk community at least, right? As far as the music. In the Hmong community, if you're coming up and you're you're a new artist, uh, I suggest you be an independent artist until you build a certain following. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if you build a certain following, you can can have a reason to join a record label. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if not, I mean, in the, in the American industry, if you're a new artist and and they can promote you and and sign you to a big contract right. and you can help them grow, but it's better that way. But in the Hmong community, it's like yeah. there's there's not as much funding, so if you're if you don't have a following, you join a record label, you're just pretty much losing out on that. Yeah, uh, right. yeah. Because you're, they pretty much own all your, uh, all your songs yeah. um, and all, all the records that you put out. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think being a part of a record label is, is definitely challenging. Even in the mainstream world, you see more yeah. independent artists now. Yeah. And record labels are kind of almost dying out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think artists are just realizing that they are, the value is them. Right, yeah. so they understand that, and they're like, "Why the heck would I give it to somebody else?" Now it requires the artist to also become a little bit of an entrepreneur. He right. needs to understand, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. I need a manager here, I need this, I need that. So it forces you to become like that, but at least you don't have to give your rights to to the record company. Right. Mm-hmm. You and still own everything. Yeah, you still own everything. And like you said, I think in the Hmong community is different too because maybe the promoter is not big enough, right? Maybe if the promoter was huge, yeah. and he's like, yeah. "Yo, I can get you like." This million million views, then you'll be like, for real, yeah, you know. Yeah. But I think the Hmong space is not that; it's not big enough like that. So it's just like I'm gonna do it on my own, or I just assume that that's how you would think. Like I'm gonna just do it on my own, and you know, because I don't know what what is a promoter even really, or not a promoter, but like a record label. Like what do they really bring you other than the exposure if right. they don't have it? Because yeah, like management? Back, back then it would it made sense. Yeah, back then, you know, it made but sense. now like. We can just put our music on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And we own all of it, and then we right. we get all that Versus revenue. Before, if you came out with an album that's a death row record on the bottom, you're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, dang, we this need, guy. Yeah, we need Who somebody this to, yeah. Yeah, Who's to, this new yeah. guy up on death yeah. row? Versus, like, yeah, now it's like, like I mean, what, what would they really give you, right? Unless they had, like, yeah, other than viewership. Yeah. 
Because credibility, I mean, look, if we talk credibility as far as a promotion or record label for Hmong people, you and I can't even name one. Yeah. So th therefore, yeah. it means that there's no power in. Right. I mean, maybe yeah. there is. I don't know. I'm not part of that. Right. Um, being like, again, I don't want to, and I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm not like, I don't, I don't want to like pocket watch or anything like, but like. I think that's just, just like advice for like new artists, right? Like the finances, right? So owning your own content. Um, how about like, do you, do you see more income from booking shows? Like, is yeah, that how do where you most, make, yeah, you like some money? Yeah, like, like how do you make money as an artist? Yeah. Right? Because like it is. Especially the new, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously you gotta get a little bit popular, right? People yeah, gotta sure. wanna listen to yeah. you. For sure. Uh, the biggest thing is exposure uh, first, uh, maybe doing free shows, putting music out on social media platforms. Uh, I mean, nowadays, I think we're blessed to have YouTube, Facebook, yeah, yeah. TikTok, things that can actually generate funds for you. Yeah, right, um, right, right. So, I mean, if, if, if you have a couple songs that are out there that's popping, you know, you, you make a good amount of money nowadays, nice. I think. Yeah. Or if you're just making good content in general. Yeah. Uh, so there's a bunch of platforms that pay you. Um, and the shows, I, th I, th I think shows, I mean, nowadays, I, I feel the, the support for shows is, is good. People are starting to invest into to artists. Um, yeah. And so I think, I think uh, right now shows, I think shows and just music you put out there on streaming platforms, social yeah. media, yeah. that generates you money. Um, very few artists can live off of that. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I can yeah. name, you know, a couple people only, but yeah. most yeah. people, they'll still have to work a nine to five. But Let me ask you, with, with your... <coughs> With that one video that's hitting hard, and you don't have to give me any numbers, but with the one video that's hitting hard at 1.4 million views, can that buy you lobster dinner at least once a month as you wish? And we ain't got to put numbers down, so don't, don't tell me any numbers. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anybody to know any numbers sure. of any kind. But does YouTube give you enough to like have some things that you can at least help yourself with with just the one hitting video? You know, Because sometimes I feel like you need to have many videos that yeah. are hitting mm -hmm. for YouTube to even reckon like like sometimes I, I think in my head because I've never I don't have a video that has millions of views I always in, in my dream fantasy I think oh man if you have a video that's at 1.5 million views for sure you got to make at least this and this number right mm -hmm. so I'm not asking you what the number is I'm just asking you does can it does it give you a little bit to at least go have like a nice dinner and be like cool thanks YouTube yeah, yeah for sure right, uh, <laughs> yeah I mean YouTube is a little more strict now. You have to have a certain amount of subscribers, oh, uh, so a minimum amount of subscribers. Uh, yeah, let's say if you don't if you don't meet the minimum requirements and you get a million views, they might not even pay you. But yeah. oh, but for really? me, I've been doing it for a while. So I, I luckily I met the minimum requirements. Yeah. Okay. Uh, partnered up with them, and so yeah, with that with, with that video itself, it, it definitely uh, you know gave me a lot of opportunities Good. in my pockets to, yeah, to do things yeah. with it. You know. Perfect. Just, to invest back into the music yeah, or, know. or just to good. enjoy life, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah for sure. Yeah, so if you yeah you meet the minimum requirements, you have songs that are in the millions of views. It's definitely it's, it's definitely good pocket change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's good to know, and I'm really glad yeah, to hear it too because like you always hear this idea of like the starving artists, but I'm so glad to hear that like uh, they're they're among artists that uh, maybe not making a living yet, right? But you know that that is the goal, or uh, I think at some some point. You know, as as the Hmong artists continue to grow, I think they'll they'll definitely get there. Yeah. Uh, but like, it, it, it's cool to see like, um, cause you know you always hear about record labels like ripping artists off or mm -hmm. anything and stuff like that. It's so cool to to, to see like I think Hmong artists is like thriving, and then especially like, um, you know, um, international the international market, right? Access to music is so easy. Yeah. I think a long time ago people had to buy your CD, so to get your CD to Thailand or Laos was very difficult, but now they can pull pull you up on YouTube and find you like you know like nothing, uh, and so it's it's so easy. So it's like it's really cool to see like artists is thriving, you yeah. know, because and even know. if like even if it's not your because you know like being a music artist, especially in the Hmong world, like it's probably not your full time job, right? Mm -hmm. For probably every single Hmong artist, I I don't know. Do you, are there is there Hmong artists that's like a full time job? That's all they do. Yeah, you said there's, there's a, a couple. Few, right? there's, there's a couple. A couple for oh, sure. Okay. Internationally so, and, and and in America, yeah, that's, so that's it's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, I but it, I mean, again, it's it's not too many. Yeah, right, right, right. But I think it's dope that even if it's not right, you start it as a passion project. It remains a passion project, but you get a couple songs that hit hard. Any side income that comes from your passion oh. project is a great. Yeah. It's, it's great, right? Definitely. Like, 
Yeah. This pays your the smallest thing, your gas, your food. But just the fact that your passion project can pay and you can just enjoy like the process. Like in life, it's not all just financials, right? It could just be like the adventures you get out of it that yeah. are also fun. Like some people will say, for my business, like, does this make you money? Does this make you a lot? Sometimes I'm not even trying to make money, man. I just right. want the experience right. and it's fun yeah. and I have an avenue for it. So like you said, I think it's cool that Hmong artists if they can get paid just anything, just mm -hmm. to like sing songs that they like yeah. to do, and that's what they like to do, that's how the, that's how that's what they do in their pastime, you know. They like yeah. create music with their homies. Fuck, man, I think that's making it already, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to, to get paid off your art and your yeah, passion, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, I that's think that's that's one level of success is just yeah. getting exactly. paid for what you love to do, right? Exactly. Yeah. So. Someone gave you money because you made a song that you was just trying to make a song anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Cause I could see how it gets tough in music too, where, um, you know, well, first of all, to make crazy money, you got to get crazy big. And I can just see how that becomes a job in itself. Right. Like writing yeah. a song, for example, earlier you talked about writing a song when you're feeling something like, I feel like at a certain point it would be treated like a business where you're like, yo, I got to write at least 10 different songs this mm. week and then I'll pick what I like or don't like, but I got to yeah. at least write 10 down. So I did my job. Mm -hmm. That's different. Now mm -hmm. you're just like really trying to, you're forcing the content out in a way yeah. because you're just trying to, because you know, it's your job. Yeah. You know, you owe it to somebody else to have all that. And yeah. I think that would probably kill the, I mean, it's kind of like me with my business. At a certain point, it's like, no, we got to produce this stuff yeah. because without this production, this thing dies, right. you know? And so yeah. I think, it, I mean, I feel like that'd be a tough line yeah. as an artist. Do you feel that pressure at all to just put out <clears throat> content? Maybe um, just to like, to, to put out content put for content's out, sake yeah. versus maybe pushing something out that maybe you're p more passionate or about. Yeah, definitely. I, th I think I always feel that pressure uh, from people asking, hey, are you going to make a new song? <laughs> yeah. From less bookings of shows to, to, to smaller checks on social media yeah. and streaming platforms. Um, those are kind of things that I think pressure you into to wanting to just create for, for you know, to, to, to meet those standards, those numbers. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but I, th I think once, once it starts to become a business, I think you definitely do lose that passion and yeah. love for a little bit. Right. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, it, it, it takes both too, right? So yeah, it's, it it's, it's maybe you got to find that balance of business and, and, and enjoyment and yeah. love for it. But uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, that's why for me, it was hard to, to even take on the business side of things because yeah. I, I started to feel like I don't think I enjoy this as much, you know? So <laughs> yeah, I think that's why yeah, I took yeah, a hiatus yeah. too is because I, I mm. couldn't handle the business side of things. And I'm just like, let me, let me just be uh, someone who's in the background to support these younger artists who... Yeah has super mad potential to, to even get in the mainstream world, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Uh, is, that, is, is that a route? Like, do are, are there a lot of artists <clears throat> trying to go the mainstream route? It's hard to say. I think there's artists that want to. Are yeah. they putting in the work to really get there? I don't know. Yeah, or are, yeah. are they really making those connections to the mainstream world? Maybe, yeah. maybe not. But I think their talent is there. We yeah. just, yeah. I just feel like we don't have... Uh, that tunnel, that, that connection to the mainstream world right. just yet. I feel like we have connections to the Asian mainstream world yeah. now, yeah, yeah. and that's growing, but, um, yeah, just mainstream in general. I feel it, like if you made it to the Side by D Fest, you're, like, already up there, right? Definitely. But yeah. does that mean you can make a living and wake up every day and be like, this is what <laughs> I do, yeah. and I have a good life doing it, you know? Because yeah. I feel like if I was a Hmong artist, if I made Side by D-Fest, that's like, I made it, bro. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but does that mean I can come home and tell my wife, like, yo, quit hey, your job, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. tell her to quit we, your job. You know, yeah, those yeah, are yeah. different yeah. things, you know? They're right. different things. Not that you can't be proud. You should yeah. still be proud of, of, of any achievement, even, even mm -hmm. headlining Far East or something like that. Like, yeah. you should still be proud of that. But... Yeah. There's levels to to the game, and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, I'm just happy to even hear that you're saying that a couple of Hmong people are actually able to be like surviving uh, their daily life through their yeah. music. Just mm -hmm. to hear that alone gives me a lot of hope about what is possible, yeah. right. because I didn't even think that. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking that that was happening. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, that's freaking incredible, man. Um, I think we're coming on an yeah. hour. Do you got anything else? No, let's play. Where can where, people, yeah, where find do, where, where people find you, Punk? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm active on Facebook. Um, I like to think myself more as a content creator now than really yeah, an artist. Yeah. I like to just put things out there, uh, especially because I'm generating funds through Facebook, which I'm thankful for nice. now. Mm -hmm. um, good, yeah. So Facebook, YouTube, um, 
I wish I was more active on YouTube too. Yeah. Um, so go check out his YouTube. If yeah, you guys aren't Pong, already sub, go sub. YouTube is just yeah. uh, what's the username on YouTube? Yeah, just Pong Vang Music, super okay. basic. P H O N G. Uh, V A N G. That's it. All one word. P O N G V A N G, and then oh, music. Yeah. Pong Vang Music. Yeah. Yeah. So those are two platforms I'm mostly on. Um, other than that, yeah, just see me uh, in person at shows and yeah, events. Yeah, go to <laughs> yeah, go support yeah. live. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the best way. I, I love I love meeting supporters in person too. So oh, yeah, okay. or just to see people sing my songs when I, I go on and perform, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Man. Yeah. All, All right. right man. Thank you. So Thank you guys much. for having Thank me. Paying in too. Yeah. Appreciate sure. you guys a lot. Hell yeah. Thank you, man. Oh, dude, I really appreciate you coming out, man. I've been, I've been oh. about to hold a conversation.